Hey everybody, uh, I just want to make a little testimony video. I've been feeling it on my heart for quite a while now to make this. Um, and I'll be honest with you, I haven't even really thought about what I fully wanted to say. Obviously, I know the journey, but um, I'm going to just jump right in. And I don't know how long this video is going to be. Obviously, you guys do, but um, yeah, let's jump in from the beginning. Um, so when I was probably 10 years old to 12 years old, maybe 13, um, I lived in Huntington Beach, California, and there was a church there by the beach that was called First Christian Church, uh, FCC, and um, they had a pastor there that was just amazing, and he <clears throat> he really got across to me, um, but I was still in that stage of like um, really not liking church and just being so bored and constantly looking at the clock and like um, wanting to pull out my phone and like wanting to doodle on the paper that they give you and like just not into it, but um, the seeds were being planted at that time. Now I can see that. And um, <clears throat> so I did that and I was, I would go whenever I felt like, like I wanted to and I fell out of it. And then um, that was pretty much it for my Christian journey until I was about um, 16 or 17, um, at the end of high school. Um, and I remember in middle school telling some people that I was an atheist and I didn't believe in God. Um, but um, when I got to high school, the end of high school, I uh, I started to tell people what I really thought about it and um, what the enemy had planted in my head, I see now. But um, when I was working at the country club right after high school, um, that I worked at for a long time, seven, seven years, six years, and um, I was working there and I would tell some of my coworkers that were, um, some were younger than me, some weren't, but, um, you know, they were just young, young guys. And I would tell them, um, I believed Christianity and religion were created long ago by governments that um, needed a way to hold people morally accountable. I thought, you know, people are running through the streets chopping their heads off and killing each other and, um, you know, going to jail or dying isn't, isn't, isn't enough of a, a punishment. So they needed eternal, eternal damnation um, and burning to, <clears throat> to really get through to people and I would tell people that I would literally spew that venom out of my mouth over and over and over again to anybody who wanted to talk about that stuff and um it was like I was trying to steer Christians away from from their faith and it's I look back now and it's 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 crazy to think about the fact that I was doing that and I I didn't I didn't want to you know I mean it wasn't like I was like trying to do that I just that's what I believed and um but anyways, um, I, uh, through that next period, the next, I'm 25 now. And from the time I was 17, 18 till, um, somewhat recently when I was saved, I, um, I had some problems with some addictions. It was never, never got to the point where, um, like anybody could really tell my, um, my family didn't know anything because it really wasn't that bad of a problem. It was just, um, Genetically, I I have a lot of addiction, depression problems in my family, um, but I always thought, you know, that's this is what I'm given um, for my family, and um, I just was stuck with it. I thought, and you know, I I really I really struggled, and I mean, there was um, there were times when I was a lot younger where like pornography, I, I never got addicted to that, but I would watch it sometimes and um, I liked it. I mean, it, it, it never really sat right with me. It always made me a little uncomfortable, but um, you know, boys, boys are boys when they're young, especially living in the new Babylon, you know? Um, but yeah, I, it was mostly um, alcohol was a problem for a time. Um, that was like the first one and nicotine lingered around um, and um, actually marijuana um, THC was one that, that really had a hold on me for a little bit, but um, I've been able to break through uh, through that. Um, thanks to God, you know, he's, um, there's been so many times in my life where um, I was brought to my knees just because I was put in a bad situation that really whether it broke my heart or I felt bad about myself or I regretted something, whatever it may be. Um, and I, there were times where I, uh, you know, I just, I just, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought, but anyways, um, yeah, so my, my journey, I'll continue with that, with the Christianity. So, um, 
in 2020, my wife and I, we moved to, um, or no, I'm sorry. It was, yeah, okay, it's the end of 2020. My wife and I, we moved to, from California to Colorado, right in between um, Denver and Boulder, this town called Broomfield. And it was really nice. We loved it. It was great. Um, and we stayed there for a full year. But while we were there, you know, we knew um, it wasn't home for us. So my wife randomly picked Knoxville, Tennessee, and that's where we are. And um, I'll pick back up on that that part. Um, but I'm gonna veer off here. Um, so when I when we first got to or right before we left for for Colorado from California, I had bought a King James Bible and. Um, I, I sat in the backyard, I had these mats that I used to do my little MMA workouts on, and I would just lay down on the mats and put the Bible down, and I would just lay there and read it as long as I could stomach, and I wanted to read the Old Testament and New Testament front to back at least once, because um, I feel that's something that most people should do if you have anything on your heart pulling you in that direction. But um, um, <clears throat> So I got into it, and I read through the entire Bible, and now I've read it like five times front to cover, and I've read like the New Testament, probably like eight or nine times. Um, but, um, you know, I, when I was reading that, it, it really, it really um, pulled on my heart really bad. And, you know, I, I really started to believe that, you know, um, man could not have put this story together. And when you get into like some of the like conspiratorial stuff, like the gematria and um, the, the, the assembly of the book and how it's put together and the numbers behind it it's like it's almost like it's like a piece of nature and um the way nature is designed and like um it's just so perfect in how they put it together and um you know i i it started to speak to me really badly and um we we went to a church there for a little while in colorado and the pastor was good um he wasn't breathtaking, but he was great, and um, I enjoyed it. And I kind of fell out of going to church right before we left, um, and I still hadn't gone for like almost a year after we moved to Tennessee. And um, you know, somewhat recently, I started attending a church. But um, there's a pastor named Charles Lawson, and um, I had been watching him online for several months, and my buddy. Um, a few weeks back told me, hey, you know that he's he's in the area and he's like 20 minutes from here. And I was like, no way. Um, you know, I knew that God had brought me to Knoxville, Tennessee, um, especially considering the fact that it had never even popped into my mind. And, you know, I just ended up here and it worked. And um, I know I'm here for a reason. And when I walked into that church, um, I, I had never felt the Holy Ghost in the room like I did there. And... Um, I knew something something was going on and I, I started crying during the service like randomly and um, it was it was really powerful and you know I've been to a lot of churches I, I just told you guys about the couple ones that I was uh, like attended often but um, this church and this pastor you know he's um, he's a bright light in a dark world and I'm so grateful that I moved here I'm so grateful that I found this church and all these people there that are so awesome and um, just what they believe and how strictly they believe the Bible without being you know crazy um, and like um, running people out of the church or whatever you know they're inviting people in and they're trying to get people help no matter what your situation is and uh, that's what Christianity is all about right but um, yeah guys I just I want you to know that um, sometimes God needs you to be brought to your knees, literally, like in some of the worst situations, it might be your mom dying, it might be, God forbid, but it might be um, your wife leaving you, it might be whatever that may be, um, you need a wake-up call. And um, you talk to a lot of Christians that are that are very serious about their faith, and they'll tell a similar thing how the, of a fork in the road that they know. Um, they can kind of tell you the exact moment in time where they knew that they see now that they were at a fork in the road and um, there were two clear paths in opposite directions. And, uh, you know, that's recently kind of what's happened to me. And I, I always thought that I had been saved. I always believed in Jesus. I believed he was he was he was God. And I believed that, um, you know, I could get my head around all those things. And I did believe them. But um you know, until, until the Holy Spirit comes in you and convicts you and, um, you know, that 
the life filled with sin is behind you. Um, obviously, all of us are going to sin forever, but, um, you know, the least amount that you can sin is the best, obviously, and that's what keeps you closest to God. But, um, yeah, I just, um, right before I started going to this church and right before something happened to me that um, really brought me to my knees, um, I had veered the furthest away from God. Um, I went I went and read the Quran uh, about a year ago, and then about three months ago, I started getting into, like, just looking into Hinduism, and I started reading the Bhagavad Gita and um, their holy texts or some part of the Vedas, and, um, you know, I, I really, I, I, I just wanted to try it, you know? I felt like I should give all the religions a fair shot, you know? Um, if I'm expecting people to give Christianity a shot and give Jesus chance to come into their heart that I should I should really give all of these a shot so I did um, at least the ones that my heart pulled on and told me that I should do so um, I, I did read a lot of that and um, you know I there it came a point right before the you know what hit the fan and things kind of fell apart for me um, I was out in my backyard walking around um, I trade stocks as you guys know and um, I was sitting on my phone watching them and I was just um, with headphones in listening to this YouTube Ganesha Ganesha is one of the godheads in um, in Hinduism and it's the the god of like success and good fortune um, so I was saying these mantras these um, things that I heard on YouTube and I would just hum them over and over again like uh, like a crazy person. I'm not saying you're crazy if you say mantras, but, um, it was, it was an, an um, it was a, like, a, not impulsive, but it was, um, uh, I don't know. It was just, it was like a, I need to do this and I'm, this is going to bring me good fortune and this is going to bring me to the next level. And I'm going to make, I'm going to make a million dollars if I do this, or I, I don't know what I was thinking, but, um, you know, um, I had veered too far from God and I had started thinking in these certain ways. Um, and I really, I really get into these conspiracy theories and like, um, but I, I feel I am pretty good at discerning between the BS and the, the plausible things with the legitimate evidence. Um, and you know, um, I started getting into like, um, the Freemasons and the, all the Luciferian culture that we yeah, and they try and make it seem like it's just, it's not, about God or Lucifer, but, um, if you look enough into it, it really is. And they, they really, they really have a certain way of believing that's pretty crazy. And, you know, um, this is not the path for everybody, but I personally, I needed to find the darkness in the world to see that I needed to see that there was legitimate darkness on a, in a spiritual sense. Uh, obviously people can be bad, but I needed to know that they had allegiance to something, something that we didn't understand or, um, whatever and it's very clear that they do and that's why they they run things the way that they do but um, you know that that's what got me to God and um, I continued after my Christianity I really started getting into the conspiracy it almost made it worse and I started like just going down way too deep and obsessing um, and not even reading the Bible that much just looking for Bible verses that contradicted what I was seeing or whatever you know and um, I, I, one of my favorite pastors, Derek Prince, who's no longer with us, but um, he said in one, one um, sermon, he said, don't get too caught up in uncovering the darkness that you forget the, um, you forget to, you forget to acknowledge the light that's revealed to us. Um, you know, because you can look for these things and you can be, you can gain some wisdom and knowledge and, and some practical sense of how the world operates, but, um, I would advise you guys not to um, obsess over the darkness because um, what what is hidden is not from God. Um, what God wants us to have is revealed to us, and it says that in the Bible. And um, you know, you just gotta stick with that. And um, but you know, guys, uh, I can't tell you how how good it feels, and um, I can confidently say it was the weirdest experience I ever had. But um, just recently, um, I was in the worst position I've ever been in my life emotionally and mentally and just um, at the end of my road pretty much. And I, I, you know, I had some thoughts of ending things because I've dealt with that before in the past, but it had been a really long time and it scared me. But those thoughts started to creep in. But, um, you know, when God's trying to take over my life, um, of course, the enemy is going to ramp up and do whatever he can. Um, 
but that's the time when you need to be strong and that's the time when you need to just get on your hands and knees and beg God to give you the strength and um, you know that's it you know, just give you the strength and the discernment to know what's what's good for you and what's bad for you and the long-lasting implications that little decisions can have in your life and you know I just um, sometimes we need to be brought to our absolute rock bottom rock bottom just to um, feel God's love and it's so weird because in the I can confidently say for the within a matter of 30 minutes I felt the worst I've ever felt and then the best I've ever felt and um, I'd, I was sobbing you know like it was just so humbling and it was like I because I begged for God and I was almost I was very frustrated and I was a little angry and um, somewhat spiteful a little bit, I guess. And um, he wrapped me in his arms and that's what I asked him to do. And that's exactly what he did. And, um, you know, it made me, it just, it, I just sobbed, you know, like it was the most powerful experience I've ever had. And, um, you know, I'm back on track now and I'm reading the Bible every day and I'm, I've, I've gotten rid of all these addiction things and I'm just trying to work on myself and become a better person and um, you know just just trying to strengthen my faith and live for God and uh, glorify him every day in any way that I can um, it's not easy all the time but 